The way we make things is changing, radically. A new set of ideas and trends have emerged and combined to create a new industrial revolution, one led by people and human innovation. They're using ideas like collaborative design teams and leaner, more customizable manufacturing. Once upon a time, a factory made one thing. Now, a factory can make almost as many things as there are people to imagine them. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Gas and welding products group Afrox has partnered with the Gauteng Department of Education by investing over 1 million rand in upgrading and resourcing the welding training facilities of five underprivileged technical high schools in Gauteng. Ilan Solomons has the story. The upgrading and resourcing partnership campaign was officially launched at the Jabulani Technical High School in Soweto last month. Afrox MD Brett Kimbler explains the rationale behind the initiative. So I think from a corporate responsibility standpoint, AFROX is part of the Linda Group and all companies have a responsibility. But AFROX specifically has multiple products, whether it's gases or welding. So we've been looking at how can we help the development of South Africa. And for many years there's been a deficit in the generation of new artisans. So we've seen that deficit not only with work that we need to, to do, but more importantly there's a deficit. And so we said how do we do this? Do we set up a training school or do we assist at the grassroots level? And so we felt it's important at the grassroots level and so we were looking for technical schools that we could actually provide some product and services and training. And through the Department of Education we've been able to actually come together and work in the background for a while. It's been 12 months that we've been working on this and now we've picked the most appropriate schools collectively. We, we put our heads together and we've picked five schools in Gauteng and we will now, you know, iron out all the issues and the teasing problems and then we'll go to the other provinces in South Africa. For the South African economy to develop to its full potential, the country needs to re-industrialise and for this to be achieved there needs to be a sufficient number of skilled individuals says Gauteng Department of Education, Deputy Director General for Educational Support, Bayani Umpofu. We must ensure that the young, the, young, the young people, both boys and girls, must emphasize that, must be provided with the necessary technical skills. Talk about the, art, uh, the artisanship approach. You talk about the issues of welding. You talk about the issues of mechanics plumbing and so forth and therefore our approach as a Houghton provincial government is to turn around our, um, our, our, technical high, our technical high schools to ensure that they provide with the learning areas that will be therefore appropriate for our learners to participate actively and positively in the industry that we have in Gauteng. And that can only be done if the Gauteng, the Gauteng Provincial Government through the Department of Education is able to provide the necessary resources. The upgrade to the welding training centre at the Jabulani Technical High School has provided learners with opportunities to learn the art of welding and to appreciate the skills required to become an artisan. Jabulani Technical High School Grade 11 learner Lebohang Tsele explains why she has developed a keen interest for welding. Well, I've started welding this year. Last year I, I did not get a chance to do such a thing, but since I'm doing it, I'm enjoying it and I see that it's something that I truly enjoy doing more than doing anything else. It's something that I, I keep myself busy with and it, it has brought me so many opportunities because uh, now that people can see my, pot my potential of welding, now they are starting to ask me some questions and now are willing to help me to further my studies with welding. As I'm a girl, uh, most girls don't do welding, they take it as it's a man's job. So I wanted to prove them wrong, to show them that we also as women can do welding. 
that's what made me mostly go into the subject. What I find interesting is that um, you can you can combine a lot of things using welding and make beautiful things with welding and it's something that's permanent that doesn't just break at any time. Aprox is also currently upgrading the facilities of 14 technical high schools across South Africa as part of the government's plan for economic and skills development across South Africa for Crema Media's Engineering News, I'm Milan Solomon's Jabulani Soweto. State-owned power utility ESCOM's biannual Energy Efficient Lighting Design Competition Awards took place in Santon, Johannesburg last month, showcasing local environment-friendly designs by students, learners and professionals under the theme Celebrate 20 Years of Democracy. Sashni Moodley tells us more. ESCOM's Energy Efficient Lighting Design Competition began as a pilot project in 1999 to introduce lighting designers to energy efficient technologies and motivate residential consumers to buy lampshades that complement energy efficient technologies. The three categories of this year's competition drew 506 entries with six finalists in each. It has been particularly impressive to see how entrants have harnessed developments in technology to present solutions that take the South African context into account with its own set of constantly changing variables from economics to tastes. This year's ent entrance once again demonstrated remarkable creativity, not only in terms of highly original names for their creations, but of course in the designs themselves. Names were chosen to reflect this year's themes, which was 20 years of democracy. All telling a story of our unique heritage and reflecting a truly South African identity. Category C showcased designs from promising learners and Stellenberg High School learner Megan Lawton from Cape Town was the winner of 10,000 Rand in this category for her shredded lantern design. It feels really amazing to have one be the winner in Category C. I really didn't expect it. I had to first take a moment to just process it when they told me that I had won. It's yeah, really amazing. I designed the shredded lantern which is a design that makes use of shredded telephone directory pages. I decided to use telephone directory pages because it symbolizes um, how everybody's number is unified into one book, how, in the same way that everybody is unique, but they're all united into one democratic South Africa. And now without the segregation laws anymore, everybody can just come together and, and form one. And I decided then to, to pack the, the strips of the shredded paper into, on top of each other in like a random weave type look. And the thought process was behind this was that it symbolizes how the apartheid was shredded and torn apart and then rebuilt into the democracy in the same way that the paper has been shredded and then rebuilt into the light. And I was inspired to make this design after researching um, different symbols of um, apartheid and then also democracy and also looking at weaving. Uh, for some reason I was drawn to weaving so that's how I came to this, this concept. Other news making headlines this week, City of Ekuruleni Mayor Mondli Gungubele pledges to ensure a more predictable, stable business environment. As the city of Ekuruleni continues its bid to develop the largely industrialized metropole into the continent's first aerotropolis, Executive Mayor Mondli Gungubele has committed the city to creating a predictable, stable and enabling business environment in which foreign and local funders could be confident that their capital investments were secured. The biggest challenge we have as government is to sustain an environment of certainty is to sustain an environment of predictability, is to sustain an environment where anticipations are not futile, an environment where, an environment of that kind, people are able to release their energy. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy.